We yeah, never talked sure. about it. Yeah. It was, um, it, it was, it, it, you know, I know Teresa explained it this at one point or someone did. It's like there was an elephant in the room all the time. Yeah. For me, that elephant in the room was because I just didn't want the pain to be vocal. I, I, if it was a good day, I wanted it to stay a good day. <laughs> we were raised not to burden people. Right. Or to we were raised not to talk about immoralistic things. And this was immoral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was shameful. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't talk about it. Yeah. We and then we couldn't talk about it. Right. So we didn't do that kind of stuff. I've stayed away from my family for 30 years. <laughs> much as I could <laughs> because I didn't want to have to deal with it or you know like Carolyn said nobody really knew about me so you know if there was a conversation in the corner about it I didn't want to hear that it was about Carolyn all about Carolyn it was about me too but so it, instead of that I just stayed away mm -hmm. and for me the more I achieved successful things I tiptoed around them because I knew they were struggling. struggling and I felt guilty almost for being successful, yeah. um, which put a wedge between all of us too. We never talked about it in the family. Right after we found out we had a wedding, so we had to bury it for a while. <coughs> yeah. It was after the wedding that I went to the diocese. And of course, they were very, the priest I went to was Father Overball, Monsignor Overball. He had been a friend of our family's. He ate at our table. He had my older daughters at the rectory, but he looked at me and said, I wondered why you would let your girls go to the rectory. And I looked at him and I said, I've been senior ever, but I used to let my older girls go down and help you out. Should I have worried what was going on? And he just kind of hung his head and that was it. He said, well, we'll send uh, someone down to talk to Father Jello and see what's going on down there. So I get a call from Father Helwig, and he says, Pat, we went and talked to Father Jella, and he assured us that there was not anything going on that Carol mistook how he felt about the family. And that was it. Never heard from them again. And I, I didn't know what to do. Both of my parents were raised in Catholic homes. I mean, they all their life have been taught to hold these men at the highest. You know, they were next to God. And so, you know, to, to have that many years of cultural conditioning, how dare you question anything, you know? And, and our parents taught us the same thing, to honor and to, mm -hmm. you know, revere these men that, you know, these these are these are these are the people that you want to surround yourself. You you, to you will mm -hmm. be a better Christian mm -hmm. if you hang out with them and you help and do the good deeds yeah. that God wants you to do. The more you do and the more you hang out with him, the the closer, the closer to, God. to God you will be. I did not know. I did not realize that I was sexually abused until about I have to give it, up. it was approximately 10 years ago, I was in a counseling session with my pastor and his wife and my husband, and I was actually speaking about Carolyn, about the guilt that I had still felt and just the pain in my family mm -hmm. and the pain in, with my parents. And um, he, he just asked me to elaborate on it, and I elaborated, and he asked me just questions about you know, well, what would he do? You know, what would he, and I just told him about different things he would have me do and 
here I am still thinking this was the priest, this is education, I have my own children, I would be mortified if their pastor or a priest would go into the bathroom on them and ask them to cut off their pubic hair and crazy things. And here I'm telling my pastor this and still not even realizing that I was sexually abused yeah. until he looked at me and leaned forward. I remember him leaning forward and saying, Patty, you were sexually abused. I, I, I don't know. It's, that's just, it's amazing yeah. how the mind works. Well, when that grand jury thing started, they all came alive. This was something they could do to, to take hold of their lives. Nobody protected them. Now they were going to take this on. Looked at that TV and I saw A.G. Shapiro, how happy he was, how hard he had worked. And I looked at the girls and I was in awe of them. I was in awe of my own daughters, that they were that strong. And I knew what this was going to do to their lives.